In the last video, I talked to you about citizenship and about how does a state negotiate treaties with its own citizens. And I, again, I repeat, it's not possible. In respect of the treaty, then, one needs to understand that the normal process is the treaties are set up for making be, uh, arrangement making and concluding agreements by way of a treaty under international law between two sovereign states. It's a very fine line in terms of what you give up and what you, you know, what you get in return for what you're giving up. And so people have always got to understand that in the treaty making process you will be asked to give up something. And you will also be asked um, to asking them to give you something in return for that. And so we've got to be very clear and very specific about those issues. And when the NAC was doing it, when we were doing it with the NAC, this is what we were talking about with the communities. We were out there sort of listening to the community about, OK, this is what the treaty is. What do you want from them? Yeah? So, so basically the first step was to establish a, a national framework of a set of claims by the people. Now, then we had to dissect that, everything that was said in those community meetings, and we had to dissect them so that we understood what the people were after. Yeah? And then we had to sort of separate the social issues from the legal issues and the political issues. Right? And so when you dissect all of that, in this national framework, then you begin to, then you're able to get down to the nitty gritty of what it is that you want, right? And so then you put a comprehensive claim, and when you put, the, when you conclude a comprehensive claim, it includes the social, economic, and cultural well-being of the people, and what they need. Over here, then on the other page, you flip it over. These are the integration of of laws. So. When we talk about that, we have our own chukapa, or we have our own gumbara, or we have our own, our own legal framework that we, that existed, that we had, that existed before British arrival, yeah? That's what governed our society, and there were laws there in place, yeah? In, in our case, we had capital punishment and we had corporal punishment, yeah? These were two things that are not acceptable of my modern Western society. And then you get another page and you bring that page over and this is the political framework. So when you get down to the political framework, you're getting down to the decision making. So who makes those decisions? Yeah? How do we make those decisions? So this is where we come back to Paul Coe's statement. It's a matter of power sharing. Yeah? And in power sharing, we have to understand exactly what power we seek to retain in terms of making decisions for our mob. And how do we incorporate those decision-making pro programs into a Western parliamentary regime where the legislation is written that will reflect our decisions? That's got to be reflected in a treaty. And we have to have a clear understanding of that. So, the other question that will be asked in respect to that will be, Okay, what about the white fellows in the parliament when they vote on that thing that's going to impact on Aboriginal decision making in our communities? Right? How will this be reflected um, in our communities? These are the finer points and details, the level of detail that we, have, we are yet to investigate. Um, so there's a lot of things that the Murray's, Kuri's, Guri's, Nungas, all those people have to work out. You know, the, 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 this, it's, treaty making is not an easy mm -hmm. pathway. Yeah, and everyone has a right to negotiate their own treaty. But I'm merely putting up some things here to alert people to the intricate details of treaty making.